I think we're going to die. Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. Hi, I'm Georgiana. Thanks for joining me for another episode of the podcast. My mission is to help you improve your fluency. Learning English can be enjoyable and useful, but also challenging. You might experience frustration or have doubtful or negative thoughts. For instance, you might believe, I can't speak English fluently. But a more positive way to approach this is, I'm improving my English every day. It's crucial to know that negative thoughts can slow down progress. In this episode, we will explore ways to change these thoughts and motivate you. Before you continue listening, go to my website, speakenglishpodcast.com slash podcast to get the transcript of this episode. Okay, let's start. First, you'll need to spot negative thoughts when they happen. These might involve doubting your abilities or fearing making mistakes. Keeping a journal to write down these ideas as they come up can help you understand when and why they happen. Think. Age doesn't stop me from learning. Instead of, I'm too old to learn a new language. Or, remember that mistakes help me learn. When you catch yourself thinking, I keep making mistakes when I speak English. After you spot negative ideas, take a moment to question if they're really true or not. Reflect on these questions. Can I prove this idea? Or is it just a feeling? Have I dealt with similar issues before? Am I being too hard on myself? Asking these questions help you think more logically. For instance, instead of believing I'll never speak English perfectly, consider learning a new language takes time and practice, but I can get better with persistence. One more thing you could do is set realistic goals. Setting achievable goals in language learning can fight negative thinking. Instead of aiming for perfection right away, establish smaller, step-by-step -step objectives. Picture yourself succeeding every day. See yourself confidently engaging in English conversations and handling different communication situations. This mental image will boost your confidence and keep you motivated. Instead of fearing, I'm embarrassed to speak English in front of others. Think, I'll start with smaller conversations to build confidence. And instead of thinking, I'll never be as good as my friend at English, say to yourself, I'll focus on my progress and avoid comparisons. Reframing negative thoughts is vital when learning English. Remember, learning a language is a journey. Stay determined, stay optimistic, and make sure you enjoy the process of learning and getting better at English. And now, let's continue with a mini-story. I will tell a story by asking simple questions. I use this technique extensively in my premium courses, as it is highly effective. First, I say a phrase with information. Next, 
I ask some questions. After each question, there is a pause. It's your turn to answer. After each pause, I will give a correct answer. That's how I build a story. And if you want to improve your fluency much faster, check out my premium courses at speakenglishpodcast.com slash courses. There are several levels. Okay, let's start. In a busy city, Dan was 42 and worked as an accountant. Was Dan 35 years old? No, no. He wasn't 35. Dan was 42 years old. Did Dan work as a teacher? No, Dan didn't work as a teacher. He worked as an accountant. Who lived in a small village? Dan? No, Dan didn't live in a small village. He lived in a busy city. Where did Dan live? Where? In a busy city. He lived in a busy city, not a small village. He disliked speaking English. It made him nervous. Did he enjoy speaking English? No, no. He did not enjoy speaking English. It made him nervous. Did speaking English make him confident? No. Speaking English didn't make him confident. It made him nervous. What did speaking English make him? Nervous or relaxed? Nervous. Speaking English made him nervous, not relaxed. His co-workers were good at English, but he felt too old. Were his co-workers bad at English? No, no. His co-workers weren't bad at English. They were good at English. Did he feel too young? No. He didn't feel too young. He felt too old. How did he feel about his age in this context? Too old or too young? Too old. He felt too old, not too young. One day, he helped Lisa, a visitor who couldn't speak English. Did he ignore Lisa, the visitor? No, no. He didn't ignore Lisa. He helped Lisa. Could Lisa speak English well? No, Lisa couldn't speak English well. She couldn't speak English. Did he help a visitor 
who could speak English No, no. He didn't help a visitor who could speak English. He helped Lisa, who couldn't speak English. Who did he help one day? Lisa or Mary? Lisa. He helped Lisa one day. Not Mary. They became friends, and Lisa encouraged him to learn English. Lisa and Dan, did they become enemies? No, no. They didn't become enemies, they became friends. Did Lisa discourage him from learning English? No, Lisa didn't discourage him. She encouraged him to learn English. After becoming friends, did Lisa offer advice against his learning? No, no. They became friends, and Lisa didn't advise him not to learn. She encouraged him to learn English. Dan realized he didn't have to be perfect in English. Did Dan realize he needed to be perfect in English? No, no. He didn't realize he needed to be perfect. He realized he didn't have to be perfect in English. Did he think he had to be bad in English? No. Dan didn't think he had to be bad in English. He realized he didn't have to be perfect in English. Did Dan realize he had to be fluent in English? Yes, he realized he had to be fluent and that he didn't have to be perfect in English. Dan's co-workers secretly hired Lisa, an undercover language coach. What did Dan's co-workers do? Did they openly hire Lisa? No, no. They didn't hire her openly. They secretly hired Lisa. Was Lisa an undercover medical doctor? No, Lisa wasn't an undercover medical doctor. She was an undercover language coach. Did Dan's co-workers hire Lisa, an undercover cooking teacher? No. Dan's co-workers hired Lisa, an undercover language coach. She wasn't a cooking teacher. With Lisa's help, Dan improved his English skills. Impressing everyone at work. How about Dan's English skills? Did they worsen with Lisa's help? No, no. 
Dan's English skills didn't worsen. They improved with Lisa's help. Did Dan disappoint everyone at work? No, Dan didn't disappoint everyone at work. He impressed everyone at work. With Lisa's help, did he improve his cooking skills? No, no. With Lisa's help, he didn't improve his cooking skills. He improved his English skills. Who was impressed by his improved English skills? No one or everyone at work? Everyone at work. Everyone was impressed. Well, this is the end of this short exercise. As you can see, answering many simple questions can improve your speaking, just like in a real-life conversation. Today, you've only seen a small example of how the question-and-answer technique works. Do you want to unlock this full potential? Get my premium courses at speakenglishpodcast.com slash courses. That's all for today. I'll be back next week. Bye-bye. Did you enjoy today's episode? Get the transcript now at speakenglishpodcast.com.